Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I didn't order this pen nor did I even know this model existed, although I knew the pen maker fully when. This pen was a total surprise and gift from a viewer, Joel Terrell. Joel wrote me and offered to send me his fully when 2055 Ancient Civilizations for a review and to keep or give away as I saw fit. This pen community never ceases to amaze me with their generosity and sharing spirit. This is the second pen given to me by a viewer and I'm very appreciative and grateful. Thank you, Joel, very much. Well, let's not stand here gawping. Don't stand there gawping! Oh, you've never seen the end of God before! Let's get this pen out of this box right now. <laughs> So this was a surprise today, a very pleasant surprise in my mailbox. And he's already told me what it is, but, uh, and you know what it is from the title. But let's open this box up and see for ourselves. And there it is. This is the Fully Wen 2055 Ancient Civilizations. I'm going to clean this pen out and ink it up and we'll do a review. Okay, I'm back with the Fully Wen 2055 Ancient Civilizations. We're going to take a look at the parts and features of this pen and then I'll provide some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Please make sure you stay to the end of the writing sample where I'll be talking about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. First, let's take a good look at this pen because there is a lot going on here. I'll try to get some close-ups of the pseudo hieroglyphics as well. This pen is so heavy that I think my little turntable is really groaning under the strain. So I'll put it out of its misery here. At least it's out of its misery. From the top of the cap, we see some sailing ships under stars, followed by a caravan of camels and camel riders in the desert with hawks. There's another hawk. I like how the water motif runs horizontally and the uh, sand motif here runs vertically. Moving on down to the barrel, we see a cityscape with minarets and constellations, palm trees, moon and stars, more palm trees, and a hawk flying through the air. And then we see some Arabic patterns, a lamp, A hand in some kind of an interesting glyph. And at the bottom, another caravan of camels moving the other way with riders and buildings in the background and a camel handler. The entire Freeze story of this pen tells of an Arabic culture of exploration and travel on the seas and deserts using the stars as navigation. I believe this pen was available both in the gold finish and in a silver finish. Joel mentioned to me that he tried to get the silver version of this pen, was, but was unsuccessful. I looked at the Fully Wen website, fullywen.com, and found the 2055 in its new product listings. 
The page only shows the silver version, which, in addition to being silver in color, is also different from this one in design of the hieroglyphs, which are in Egyptian rather than the Arabian motifs on this gold pen. This is a very big and heavy pen. Starting again at the top, there is a small cap finial, and then there is a large bullet-shaped cap. The glyphs seem to be of some sort of stamped metal sleeve, uh, but the weight of the pen suggests that the core of the pen is brass. The cap tapers down to a couple of bands towards the end of the cap and then a small step down to the barrel. The clip is of an arrow design that is vaguely reminiscent of the Parker arrow and it is very very stiff. It is so stiff it is almost unusable. Looking inside the cap we see there is a plastic liner that incorporates the threads. The barrel starts with a ring then we have the stamped metal frieze or glyphs that tapers down to a faux blind cap with a small end button which mirrors the one at the top of the finial. The cap screws off with one and about a quarter turn to reveal a tapered and convex section and a number six size gold colored steel nib. The nib has some scroll work on it and it says Iridium Point, but there is no branding on this at all. I'm surprised there is no branding here as I have a few medium number six nibs marked Fullywen that I purchased from Bobby. Also the Fullywen website has a section on Fullywen nib which display the Fullywen name. Interesting their new products do not carry those nibs. Even though the cap goes on and off with slightly over one turn. The cap feels unstable and I've struggled with getting it threaded properly a number of times. It's very reminiscent of the Jinhao 159, of which I have four. Um, and I purchased numbers of them because number one, they're inexpensive and I like the big size pen, but also because some of them have gotten to the point where I don't uncap them anymore because the threads are so crossed that I, I can't trust that I can ever get the cap back on again. And this one feels the same way. It kind of wobbles when you first put it on and you get lucky and there's a thread and then well, just like that it catches. So I'm very careful when I'm trying to thread this pen and I back it up quite a bit and if it snags at all I'll back it up until I find another starting point on that thread. The cap threads on the top of the barrel aren't very sharp and you don't really feel them but there is that step down to the threads and you do feel that and that is not sharp but it is a pronounced edge and that convex taper doesn't help with your grip sliding on that on that section very much um, it does feel fairly slick and it does force your fingers down towards the nib the saving grace is those threads actually because that anchors my thumb a little bit. However, the large size of this pen and the tapered slick grip, meaning writing with this pen for any length of time can get uncomfortable. The section unscrews to reveal an inexpensive standard international cartridge, which has no branding on it at all. The pen also accepts standard international cartridges, the short ones, and the barrel is big enough to accept two of those cartridges uh, in piggyback fashion. The pen does post and surprisingly deeply and surprisingly securely, but it does make it a fairly unwieldy long pen. The cap isn't that heavy and doesn't actually back weight the pen. As you can see, it, it still is nose heavy but it's still too unwieldy to write with in a posted fashion. That's actually fairly comfortable. And now let's look at some measurements, some size comparisons, and I'll be right back with a writing sample.
Okay, we're back for the writing sample portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Fully When two zero five five ancient civilizations. I believe this is a medium nib, although it's not marked. And the ink today, how could it be anything but diamine ancient copper? I mean, it is ancient and it is ancient sea. So it was a perfect match as far as I'm concerned. Diamine, diamine, whatever your flavor. Ancient copper. Now I've used this ink in a couple of pens now. It's a fairly new ink for me. And um, this is the first pen that's actually written wet enough to sh make it show off its uh, shading uh, potential. And it's a very, very nice ink. So let's check the wetness here right away. And you, as you can see here, this is very wet indeed. And the pen is very smooth. That skip was me. This nib required no smoothing at all. Uh, so it's writing like this without any adjustment. As far as I know, the pen hasn't been inked before. Uh, now, Joel might have done some work on this or had ink in it. If he did, he's cleaned it out very, very well. But I suspect this, uh, this is the first time this pen has written. I was able to get this nib and feed out of the section fairly easily as well. So that being a number six is easily swappable with other nibs. But the nib assembly itself in there would not come out, and I suspect it's glued in. As to line variation, that is no pressure whatsoever. And that is a little bit of pressure. As you can see, it's giving me some line variation, which is very interesting out of a steel nib. I was not expecting that. And as you can see, it's very wet. This is still wet up here. It is in no way a flex nib. It certainly gives more than, say, a pen BBS nib will. Let's listen to it right. So there is a little bit of feedback, but that is really, really smooth. And for some reverse writing. It really doesn't work there. A little bit, but very scratchy and very dry. And as to some quick writing. As you can see, it's keeping up very, very nicely. And now some thoughts on what I do and don't like about this pen. First, what I like. Well, this pen is just fascinating, isn't it? Please, Spock, do me a favor and don't say it's fascinating. No, but it is interesting. Talk about a pen with a story. This pen doesn't just adopt a theme with a stamped pattern. It actually does tell a story of an ancient civilization with the sailing ships navigating by the stars, the wandering caravan of travelers with their hunting hawks and pots and lamps. 
With all of these fascinating patterns, the pen is still very understated for a large gold pen. I think it would look amazing on anyone's desk as both a display ornament and a very useful fountain pen. Just sign right there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, All right. Help me in with this. Help me in with this. Help me in with this. Think of your secretary. Uh, That was a very good suggestion. I like that the section matches the color of the design of the pen as well as the nib. So we're seeing gold throughout. I also like how buttery smooth and wet this pen writes and that it takes standard international cartridges and allows the cartridges to piggyback. And further, I like how easy it would be to swap that nib. As for what I don't like, well, there are a few things. The clip is so stiff it is difficult to use. The section is slick and the shape encourages grip slip, although the threads can hold that in check a little bit. The pen is very heavy, even when writing unposted, which is really the only way you want to write with this pen, even though the cap posts. Even though it is heavy and becomes uncomfortable for longer writing sessions, I think this pen would be a terrific desk accessory and signature pen. And because the nib is easily swapped, you could put a Yovo Broad in this pen and make it a real true signature pen that makes a statement. And there we have it. The Fully Wen 2055 Ancient Civilizations. As of the date of this video, only Bobby's eBay store has this pen available for $26 US and $3 shipping. And there are only four available currently. So special thanks go out to Joel Terrell for his generous donation of this pen for review or giveaway. I'm still very much on the fence about giving this pen away as I want it on my desk for a while. I'm enjoying it so much. We'll see if it goes anywhere. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... for watching... And that's all she wrote.